for everyone in their own ways. And one of the things that we've learned is that don't underestimate how difficult it is for other people as well. Like we've all got our own problems, but other people are going through stuff too. Yep. And, and it's, it's not, just about that awareness. And it's not just about the physical aspect of wellness. It's also about the mental wellness as well. So many of us have faced issues, especially with all the lockdowns happening around the world, mm -hmm. uh, just being isolated. How do we maintain that social interaction? And for the first part of today's show, that mental wellness is something that we're going to be focusing on a little bit more. So we'd like to invite our first guest to come and join us exactly Executive Director of Limitless, Asha Lowe. Asha, come and join us. Sit with me. Yeah, all right. Okay. How are you doing, Asha? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, thank yeah, you thanks for coming, for coming yeah. on and joining us. us. Um, so tell us a little bit more about Limitless. All right. Uh, I mean, like, Limitless is a youth organization. Um, we work with young people from the age of 12 to 25 years old. And primarily what we do is we provide uh, counseling and case management to help young people who, who uh, need help, right? especially in the area of mental health. So, you know, when we, when we think about like, the work that we do, mm -hmm. I realized that, interestingly enough, um, most of our cases actually, they are used to come in on their own. Right, so so they've heard of us from their friends, or so they 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 go on Google and they search, talk to someone, and they find us, right, and, and and they come in on their own, and and we see that it it is a huge need right now, especially mm. in the current situation with COVID nineteen, and uh, you know we talk about how like physical health is so important and all that, but but you know COVID nineteen has just shown us as mental health professionals how important, uh, or how how much it has affected everyone's mental health as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what are some of the big problems that you're actually seeing from the youth of today? Some of the big problems that we see actually would be access to mental health services. Mm. So, that, that's one of the biggest problems. So, so I mean, youth have no money. <laughs> They're poor. It's, tr it's true, it's true. Yeah. Which, yeah. which teenager has Enough money to go spend on a to therapist? To yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, like therapy costs like 150 bucks. Mm. Uh, an hour. No youth is going <laughs> to, no teenager is going to be able to pay that, right? N not even like a university student. So, so access to services is one thing. Um, another thing is that in general, youth's mental health uh, compared to maybe many years ago, right? Like maybe when I was a youth, you know, the, the issues have changed. Right, they live in a very connected society. Mental health issues are a little bit more pronounced right now. And if we look at it right now, we see that people are struggling a lot more. And that brings me to the second thing. So, so we see uh, young people struggling with suicide ideation. Right, a lot, a lot more. So you know, I was just looking at the, the numbers. Last, uh, this year itself, you know, we've had about 45 young people, 46 young people who, who we had to deal, you know, with suicidal ideation, suicidal mm -hmm. actions. Yeah. And wow. I guess that, that's really rough. I mean, the, the idea of suicide, I think, um, is sometimes glorified yeah. by the media. Um, and it becomes like an easy out. Uh, because, and, and I say this from a point of when I was younger, I mean, I'm, I definitely thought of things like this mm. um, from being bullied and from going through various things as a hormonal teenager. Um, it is, it, it seems like a reasonable solution. Yeah. But when you think about it, and especially on hindsight, you're like, mm -hmm. that was such a silly idea. Mm. But then it does take a lot of the experience mm. of somebody else to explain that, you know what? This isn't the end of the world. It may feel like it's the end of the world, but there is no need to unnecessarily take your life. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's where people like you guys come in. Yeah, actually, you know, when we think about suicide, most, most youths don't, or, or most of the people who, who think about suicide uh, aren't really thinking about killing themselves. They're uh, thinking of ending pain. Mm. And if, you know, if they are experiencing a lot of pain at this point of time, um, that could be the most logical way out, mm -hmm. you know, for, for many of them. And, and the solution to that is to help them end the pain, right? Help them resolve the issue. So at least get them to a place whereby, you know, the pain is not so severe mm -hmm. that they think about suicide as an option. So you guys have a, a fair few initiatives that you uh, use to help with these causes. Mm. Um, and one of such is the Limitless Run. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. All right. So the run, 
uh, is our response to COVID-19 and how <laughs> we've, we've not been able to fundraise. Joining right? the running club. <laughs> yes, joining the running club. I, I mean, we, we chose a run for a few reasons. Number one, uh, when we do like a virtual run, it's uh, easy to do. So, so you can do it at any point in time. But running is not easy for many of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It takes a degree of Me mental... Included. Yes, mental it takes metal. a degree of mental... Yeah, you're, you're right, you know. And it takes, it takes um, quite a bit of mental mm. strength to get through like maybe five kilo kilometres for the, the average person. Five click. Five click. I got through five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, when we think about it, right, uh, running, running seemed like the perfect thing. Mm. And, and we don't just want to help you know, we don't just want people to run, right? You know, your money goes to, the good, to a good cause. It goes to helping us provide services for these young people out there. But, you know, we don't just want you to come and run and be done with it. So part of the run also is this, you know, when you come in, you sign up for the run, you also get access to two masterclasses out of five. You can choose out of five, right? Um, from mental professionals, either from ourselves or, you know, other agencies that we work with. And at the same time, right, you know, it's... We don't just want you to be done with that. So you go take the information, you go back to your community, you go make a difference. We also would like our runners to multiply their impact. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is we are giving each and every one of them a toolkit to also help fundraise for the cause. I really like wow. that. Yeah. I like this holistic Pass approach of, of trying to approach it all because let's, let's face it, wellness really is an entire thing. It's not just about taking care of the mental aspect but also that physical aspect yep. and that's something we're going to explore in the next segment as well. So stay with us. We are going to go for a short break here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. When we return, our next guest is going to be talking a little bit more about the physical side of things but don't worry, we're going to see how it all comes together after the break. Welcome back to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. We've got our second guest, Singapore footballer for Haogang United Football Club, Lionel Tan, joining us in studio. How are you? Thank you for having me here. I, I mean, I'm good. I'm good right now. And You're good now. You're good I'm now. good now. <laughs> <laughs> because so, back, back in a few months, I wasn't so good. So, so you, you've had quite the journey in terms of football. I mean, you eat, breathe, live, sweat exist with football from the Singapore Sports School to the Sea Games to the clubs that you've played for. Um, how, how has that whole journey been for you? I think it has been a really long journey, you know. I learned you say a lot that, of things. but you're like 23 years old. No, but it was a long <laughs> journey before I became a full professional footballer. I had a lot of obstacles, you know. You sacrifice a lot, so I'm part of where I am right now, but uh, the work never stops. And it's all about working hard again. And I have good and bad moments, you know, but I appreciate all of it because I learn from it. I learn from all my experiences and, I mean, it makes me a better person as I well. I was just going to say, it makes you a stronger person, more resilient. I mean, it takes a lot to be able to wake up at 5 o'clock every morning to make sure <laughs> that you get there for training every single time. Now, you say that you are much better now than you were a few months ago. That's because you actually contracted COVID. Yeah, it was... Can you uh, tell us a little bit more? Uh, when I first contracted COVID, it was quite bad because uh, I was at home uh, most of the time, only probably went out to get my food or to exercise uh, because I was uh, told to be home, you know, stay home. Mm -hmm. So what happened was uh, when I first contracted it, I didn't know it was COVID because I just felt like it was a normal uh, illness, like I got a flu and uh, some sore throat and I took uh, medi medication like Panadols and stuff and then uh, the next day it was all good, but mm -hmm. came after that it was uh, some uh, fatigue and my back started to hurt, uh, ache a lot. So it was a constant thing. Even when I'm laying in bed and, and stuff, doing uh, normal daily uh, activities, it was uh, so tiring for me and I just wanted to eat and sleep, to wow. be honest. I, I, I even tried foam rolling myself my back, but it never helped. It never went away. <laughs> you thought, just maybe away. if I foam roll yeah. enough, it'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe you can talk us through the whole process. I mean, from finding out that you actually had it, the test and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, because you're between your first yes. symptoms so and getting tested. It was a good 10 days. So uh, I thought I recovered because uh, 
when when my flu and cough went off, it was just fatigue, you know, and it might I thought it might be from the exercises that I do, you know, uh, when I go for my runs or I work out, mm -hmm. but it never seems to go away, you know. So what happened was I decided to see the doctor the moment I lost my sense of taste and smell because it was something I looked up uh, on Google, you know. They have everything, they have everything. <laughs> Doc Dr. Google, as we call <laughs> and it. Then, and then it, back then, uh, loss of taste and smell wasn't a so-called a thing yet, you know, like... Wasn't one of the yeah, designated yeah. symptoms to look out so for. So when I went to doctors, I, basically, I went to a clinic and they asked me two simple questions, whether have I traveled out of Singapore the last 14 days or have I uh, got in contact with any COVID patients, which definitely we are unaware because it can be anywhere. Correct. It can be anywhere. So, but I did say that uh, the fatigue was real and I lost my sense of taste and smell, but apparently she's the doctor, I trust her. She said like, oh, um, no, no, because the two, the two factors uh, wasn't included, you know? Mm -hmm. So you so weren't presenting all the usual symptoms that you that a typical COVID patient would have, but you were displaying other things yep. and they maybe thought, oh no, maybe you don't have it. Yeah, so basically, she just gave me five days uh, MC, mm -hmm. and then she said that uh, within four days, if I don't feel well at all uh, with the medications that she gave me, I would have to go back to see her. So four days later, I still felt the same. It was so tiring, you know. Yeah. I still only uh, just have my meals and then go to bed and sleep, you know, hoping that I'll recover. But it never, it never did. Uh, I never recovered uh, fully. So when I did. Uh, went back to the clinic again. The very same day in the noon, I, I, I was admitted to Anting Fong General Hospital because I took a, a swab test in the noon and I managed to get my results uh, at about 10 p.m. So immediately, I waited for a bit uh, before the ambulance came and I mean, I felt, it felt weird because you couldn't uh, even simple things like pressing the leaf the, uh, they the won't person, let you do it. Yeah, they, they're helping me do it, and they said like, I, I, I can't touch any surface, you know, because mm -hmm. they were scared. Obviously, I was spread to everyone. Yeah. So, wow. when I reached the hospital in the ambulance, it was really, um, I can't describe the feeling because they basically you walk in and there were two glass panels uh, in between, you know. Mm. It must have been so isolating for you. Because the it was be isolated. Because it you've got to be in this bubble, right? Like suddenly it's just like everyone's looking at you with suspicion. Everyone is so mm. afraid to come close to you. But thankfully, the ambulance came uh, midnight, so there wasn't anybody looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> right side. But yeah, so I managed to stay in the, the isolation ward uh, for a day, for a night. And then next day I moved to a different ward with uh, other workers, mm. which I managed to speak to them, you know, get to know more of them and to, to be honest I learned so much because uh, I feel fortunate that fortunate for uh, where I am right now mm -hmm. and when, I, when you speak to them they open up to you it's not exactly what people think of them they have their families back, uh, back home as well mm -hmm. uh, they have kids you know and I remember when I went to a word because they were there they were there uh, for quite a while already yeah. so uh, when, when I went there, they told me that uh, they didn't want to have any photos or videos because they are afraid that uh, their families uh, fire out and they are worried that... They don't uh, want them to worry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that must be really hard. I mean, that sense of connection, you're, you're essentially losing that sense of connection. Mm. How, from a mental aspect then, that, that's going to have a deep impact, right? It does. Um, I, I would say we're all very social beings. So, so it's, it's super important that we have uh, people around us that we believe are for us. Right? So, you know, our friends, our family, you know, our communities. And, and when you take that aspect out of a person's life, mm -hmm. it suddenly becomes a very isolating experience. And, and that all those things affect people's mental health. It affects their mental health. It affects their ability to cope with certain situations. And it's the same, you know, COVID-19, you know, when, when you are quarantined, you're by yourself and that's when thoughts run, run wall. Yeah. Yeah. So the recovery process that you went through, uh, you were at the resort at Pasiris, Um and it turns out your brother was there as well. 
Yes, my brother got uh, COVID as well. Oh no! <laughs> and then you guys just weren't sure like who got it first, who passed it to whom. So um, the thing was, I took the swab test first. So uh, I was test I was tested positive for COVID uh, first. Yeah. But the thing is, he went back home first. You know. <laughs> so he's yeah. he got discharged. Like he got discharged. <laughs> he got discharged first as well. So it's not fair. I've been <laughs> isolated for a longer time. <laughs> but but. During my stay in uh, the resort, I mean, luckily because I, uh, I was in, I was already in contact with certain staff uh, from my team. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he, basically my head coach, and then he told me about uh, what I can expect there and stuff. So, mm -hmm. I managed in my head back then. I was, oh, how can I get back fit or rather fitter? Mm -hmm. So, well, that was I, I got apart question, from getting my clothes in, uh, yeah, apart from getting my clothes in and. Uh, necessities, you know. I managed to uh, get some equipment like wisdom band, so it wasn't too bad, you know. It, mm. it gets boring, it gets boring in there because you can't get out of your room and the nearest is maybe your balcony. So, apart from uh, communicating with my friends, you know, virtual workouts with them, mm. uh, I, I because I have uh, my own equipment, I always uh, set a, a time for me to work out uh, before dinner, you know. Because if you don't do anything, it's really boring because you're just waiting for breakfast, lunch, dinner. But I think then it, it really comes into play, that importance between and that connection between uh, both the physical and the mental side of wellness. Yeah. Asha, maybe you can weigh in here as well, just how closely in con interconnected they are. Because I think if you didn't have that physical wellness when you were in isolation, it would be you a lot might harder. have gone crazy. And I do know of people who, like, Paula Malai Ali, for example, who travels in and out of the country, she's literally calling herself the quarantine queen because she does 14 days on either oh, side. Wow. And she says it's the hardest thing. Yeah. But having that physical activity, I guess, helps boost the mood, right? Asha? Yeah, it definitely does. I think we, we when we think about our overall health, right? firstly, we need to also understand that there's no health without mental health and there's no health without physical health. Right. And when we think about how we define health in general, how is a person healthy, we're looking at four things. Right, we're looking at whether or not they're biologically healthy, are they physically healthy, mm -hmm. are they mentally healthy, so it's psychologically healthy, are they socially healthy, right? Do do they have the social support systems in place to keep them alive, right? And finally, are they spiritually healthy? So meaning, do they have like a goal in life? Do they have like, you know, do they have some some motivation behind them pushing them forward? So if we think about that connection there, right? You know, we are talking about two huge parts. <laughs> of person's overall health. Right, so so I, I think at the end of the day, um, it, studies have shown that your mental health is very much affected by your physical health, and your physical health is also very much affected by your mental health. So people with mental health conditions are also likely to, to experience more physical issues in the, in the future. So, you know, they're all correlated. So just to wrap things up, I think we would just want to get a bit of advice from the two of you. So for Asha, if people feel that you know, they've reached that point where they want to reach out for help, where mm. can they go? Um, if you're youth, you can come to Limitless, mm -hmm. right? So our, our website is at limitless.sg slash talk, T-L-K. If you're, if you're an adult or, you know, if you feel that Limitless may not be the place for you, right, there are many other options. You can, you, you can, you can go to the nearby family service centres. Um, you can go to any hospital, actually. Every hospital is equipped you know, with a mental health ward right now. You can even go to polyclinics to Fantastic. get the referrals. Yep. And uh, if, you, if you need a place to look for other agencies that are available, mm -hmm. right, we have uh, the AIC website. Mm -hmm. We have the NCSS website, whereby they, have, they both have their own list of resources. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and Lionel, just from you, what advice do you have for anyone who is uh, potentially going through what you went through? I think basically... The most important takeaway for me is uh, staying patient because when you get COVID, you never know when you recover. Like, I thought that I'll be out in a week's time, you know? Mm. Like, I felt good uh, when I was, uh, by then when I was in the hospital because it felt like my body is completely recovered. I could uh, do some workout and stuff. But basically, staying patient and staying positive is important. Talk to your friends uh, or talk to... Talk to whoever your loved ones uh, 
just think basically communicate because it's essential, you know. That even communication is absolutely key, and I think that's something Asher would definitely agree on as yeah, well. Yeah, I do. Gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. First hand experience with COVID. That, that is a, a scary Our first COVID thing. guest as well. <laughs> hey, thank you so <laughs> much. Comment. Thanks for coming on, guys, and we really appreciate it. We're going to go for a short break, but when we return, Barbara is going to be doing a workout with Lionel. This should be fun. Don't go away. with Kelly and Barbara. Now, we can't have a footballer on set and not have him run a workout. So Lionel's going to be taking us through about a five-minute workout. Yeah. What can I expect? So we all know I'm not very coordinationally blessed. <laughs> um, so what can I expect today? Well, uh, I'm just hoping to bring some simple exercises uh, to you and to everyone, and then hopefully uh, it'll be beneficial for everyone. Cool beans. Yeah. All right, so um, we also have footballs on yeah. set with us, uh, which also makes me slightly nervous. Last time I tried playing football, I fractured my wrist. So let's hope that that doesn't happen today. All right, let's get straight into it. Okay, what are we so doing first? For the first exercise, maybe we'll warm up a little bit. Just some back cross. Oh, back cross. Yeah. Just some easy ones. Okay. A little back and forth. Keeping the hips tight. Yeah, this one's always a good one to warm up. You end up getting your core activated, uh -huh. your shoulders activated. Nice, flat back and me. Oh, it's one minute. Okay. No, we've still got time. We've still got, got time. time. Yeah, we've got bit. time. We've got about 20 seconds more. I'll keep time for you. Okay. Okay. I almost regret saying that now. <laughs> and time. We're good. Okay. We've got about 15 seconds before we move on to the next exercise. Perfect. So I basically force breaks. <laughs> uh, what are we doing next? Okay, we we'll be doing some. Uh, it's a combination of core exercises. So it goes this down. way and up. This way. Oh, so it's like down first and then up. Okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Right. Let me get to it. And right, three, two, one. <sighs> Keeping those <laughs> core tight, yeah. I'm trying. Unlike you. I do not train every day. But we trained today. <laughs> we did. Okay. Keep going. If you're at home, you can probably aim to do all of these, maybe three or four sets. This is me looking as an excuse uh, for a break. And Lionel was just powering through. No, nah, I'm, I'm in trouble as well. <laughs> I shouldn't have. <laughs> you're like, shouldn't have trained so hard earlier on in the day. Woo. And time. Okay, oh, there go my hips. <sighs> Great, what have we got next? Uh, next one is a, another combination. It's tough, but <laughs> it's simple. It's this way, this way, and then we just pull it up. Okay, cool. <laughs> Clearly I was not prepared for this one. Okay, we're <laughs> going in three, two, one. So, bicycle, bicycle, bicycle and then... Up. You go slow and steady, you're feeling I the feel burn. I so much engagement right now. <sighs> Come on, Baba. Oh, he's trying <laughs> to encourage me. Bless me. <laughs> oh. Okay, we've got 20 seconds left. <laughs> I can do this. <sighs> Kelly is so lucky right now. <sighs> I'm dead as well. A little bit more time. And five seconds. <sighs> okay. Three, two, one. Okay. <sighs> okay. Cool. I got two more eggs. Got two exercise. more exercises. I feel like it can't end. Okay, but next one's better. I think it's easier. So you we wear me out completely, and then you throw in the football. No, we have some uh, upper body work. So you just get push up in, move the ball over, push, push up, up in, move the ball. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and again, you can always do this on your knees if you're feeling tired or yeah, sure. lack of strength like me. So you can do it anyway, you know. Let's go. Woo. At home if you have a ball. You know, you want to increase the difficulty level. 
I think you can do this. Increase the difficulty level. Yeah, because if you if you do no normal push up, I think uh, it gets boring after a while, right? It gets boring, and <laughs> I mean this, this gives a little bit more uh, different type of surface, you know. Look at us having conversations while we work out. <laughs> what you got? Keeping myself distra distracted. Distracted. In three, two. Okay, one more rep in. <laughs> oh, high time. Enough. Okay. So, we've got one more one exercise. Last one. What are we going to do? So, basically, we go with a plank. And then, uh, 10 seconds, we switch up to our left hand, right hand, left leg, and right leg up. So, 10 I'll seconds work, yeah. Okay. You, you do the last first, one? and then I'll, I'll Is the last one? Last one. <laughs> last one. We can do this. Okay. Let's go. Okay? Yes. Okay, let's go. Oh. Do it there. <laughs> okay. Just 10 seconds, right? Yes. Okay. And then, and then our, the elbow. Yeah, our left hand's up. Okay. Oh, left hand up? Yeah, yeah. Not like, oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Hang there. Our last one. Okay, we'll switch, your, switch our hands up. Tight and strong. See, we get to the point where I just don't talk anymore. It's usually during the last But it's the last 30 seconds. seconds. So we have our left leg up right now. Left, our left leg. Yeah. Okay. I can hear our producer kind of like giggling at me. Okay, we can change back. it. Change. Here's the last one. Last exercise. Last, last one. Seconds. And then we march on the spot. Oh, we do what now? We march. We march? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Oh, we march. Okay. And time. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, okay, we're standing. Okay. Be sweating. Awesome. That was Wednesday's episode of Kickback with Kelly Bar. Thank you so much for making me sweat today. Um, we'll be back again on Friday evening at 8 p.m. on Get Active TV. Joining us will be Power Racing Couple, Claire and Yui. We'll see you then.